You guys, this is a NASA press release that they sent out yesterday. It looks kind of wordy and boring on the surface, but if you read closer into it, you'll see that NASA is working with SpaceX to use Starship as a potential space station. That's right, Eric Berger, who wrote the book Liftoff, clued us into this, saying on Twitter that NASA is working with SpaceX on potentially turning Starship into a space station. Quote, this architecture includes Starship as a transportation and in-space low-Earth orbit destination. So SpaceX is not only using Starship to get us to Mars and back and make life multiplanetary, but we could be seeing Starship used as a space station. In fact, the press release goes further to say that seven U.S. companies in total are collaborating with NASA to advance these space capabilities. In fact, I did a Twitter space today and one of my viewers asked me to comment and report more about commercial space station development. So this press release gives us some new details, including the fact that through unfunded Space Act agreements, the second collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2 initiative is designed to advance commercial space related efforts through NASA contributions of technical expertise, assessments, lessons learned, technologies, and data. Now, who are the seven companies that NASA is working with? They are working with Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Sierra Space, SpaceX, Special Aerospace Services, Think Orbital Inc., and Vast Space LLC. Bill McAllister, the Director of Commercial Space Flight at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C., says it is great to see companies invest their own capital toward innovative commercial space capabilities, and they've seen how these types of partnerships benefit both the private sector and NASA. These companies can leverage NASA's vast knowledge and experience, and the agency can be a customer for the capabilities included in the agreements in the future. Ultimately, these agreements will foster more competition for services and more providers for innovative space capabilities. Now, this is crazy. Keep this in mind. Each party bears the cost of their participation in these agreements. So NASA selected these proposals based on an evaluation of their relevance to achieving the agency's goals and its ability to provide the requested resources, as well as the feasibility of the company's business and technical and you guys, this is all in the press release, but I know some people prefer to watch videos versus reading information. So I'm going to tell you a little more about each of the companies in the projects that they're working on in collaboration with NASA. So sorry, I don't have a prop for every company, but first up, we're going to talk about Blue Origin. And we know that Blue Origin is collaborating with NASA to develop integrated commercial space transportation capability that ensures safe, affordable, and high frequency U.S. access to orbit for crew and other missions. Northrop Grumman is also collaborating with NASA on the company's persistent platform to provide autonomous and robotic capabilities for commercial science research and manufacturing capabilities in low Earth orbit. Sierra Space also collaborating with NASA for the development of the company's commercial low Earth orbit ecosystem, including the next generation space transportation, in space infrastructure, and expandable and tailorable space facilities providing a human presence in low Earth orbit. And the main reason that I made this video is to talk about SpaceX's collaboration with NASA. They're working on an integrated low Earth orbit architecture to provide a growing portfolio of technology with near-term Dragon evolution and concurrent Starship development. The architecture includes Starship as a transportation and in-space low Earth orbit destination element supported by Super Heavy, Dragon, and Starlink, and constituent capabilities, including crew and cargo transportation, communications, and operational and ground support. That was a mouthful, but exciting stuff nonetheless. Now, Special Aerospace Services is collaborating with NASA on an in-space servicing technology, propulsion, and robotic technology called the Autonomous Maneuvering Unit, or AMU, and the Astronaut Assist AMU for commercial in-space servicing and mobility applications intended for safer assembly of commercial low-Earth orbit destinations, servicing, retrieval, and inspection of in-space systems. We're not done with the list yet, because we got to talk about Think Orbital, who is collaborating with NASA on the development of Think Platforms and Contessa. What the heck does Contessa stand for? Construction Technologies for Space Applications. Think Platforms are self-assembling, single-launch, large-scale orbital platforms that facilitate a wide array of applications in low Earth orbit, including in space research, manufacturing, and astronaut missions. Contessa features welding, cutting, inspection, and additive manufacturing technologies and aids in large scale in space fabrication. 
And finally, we'll talk about Vast, who I'm trying to get a tour with in California. Vast is collaborating on technologies and operations required for its microgravity and artificial gravity stations. Of course, this includes the Haven One commercial destination, which we have a graphic of an artist rendering, and this will provide a microgravity environment for crew research and in-space manufacturing. And the first crewed mission, which will be called Vast One, to the platform. Development activities for larger space station modules will also take place under the Space Act Agreement. That that was a lot, but that is the uh, the the long of it. The short of it is that we could see Starship as a low Earth orbit destination and potentially a space station. So pretty exciting stuff. Hopefully you uh, learned a little bit from this clip and thank you for supporting my channel and my Twitter profile.